Hello. I will be right up. Man, I can't tell you how cool it is seeing these. Now, what can I do for you? Because I've played the DOS version of the game fairly recently. Well, it, it's been a couple years, but, you know, fairly recently. Uh, I haven't played this version of the game in probably 12, 12 years at least. Yeah. So, this is really cool to see. <laughs> hey. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you? And what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> This is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, Merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. So, Alexander, you're so polite <laughs> to everyone. Oh, God. It's almost sickening, but I like it. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Alright, I don't know what Sith Lord over here is up to, but we're gonna ignore him for now. Alexander rests his feet for a moment. Alexander picks up and leaps idly through a book called The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages. God, that well, sounds that boring. Was refreshing. <laughs> you said that was refreshing in case you didn't hear him over me talking over him. Sorry. These shelves hold a collection of oddly titled guidebooks. Alexander notices such books as How to Become King with Little or No Rupees Down, Finding the Right Girl with the Right Dowry, and Why Good Princesses Like Bad Wizards. <laughs> Volumes of poetry are on display on this bookshelf. Let's read one of them! Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. Oh my god. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. Good lord. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care. Where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Yikes. 
and another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. There we go. What, is, what happened here? What is that? A page has fallen from the poem book and now lies on the floor. Look at that, look at that jackass. He, he wants it. Well, I'm closer. Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. A whole two times? Oh, time to give up then. A collection of children's books fill those shelves. Oh. Never mind then. Hey, can I help you? Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Let's fill him up. For some inexplicable reason, Alexander feels compelled to avoid this hooded old man. Gah, I love this game. It's so creepy in parts. I mean, like, you obviously haven't seen anything yet, trust me. Holy shit, there are some, like... Uh, I don't want to spoil it. There are some, like, Dark Seed, like, H.R. Geiger shit coming up later, like, late in the game. Anyway. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please, take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. Really? Thanks. We're just getting all sorts of freebies, aren't we? Alexander is carrying a book from the bargain table in the bookshop. Alexander has a love poem from a book in the bookshop. God, I love this game. We haven't even done anything cool yet, but I'm already, like, all up in it. All right, let's go to the pawn shop next. Good day. Ugh, oh, this guy is awesome. Let's take a look around. Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. The pawn shop is a dimly lit place with a slightly musty smell. Curiosities litter every corner and every shelf. For sale are articles that range from the bizarre to the commonplace, from the priceless to the practical. The back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example, a hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. Oh man, all right, uh, let's check this guy out though. The pawn shop owner is a mysterious fellow. His face is old and inscrutable, and there's a glint of sheer iron in his gaze. Still, Alexander senses this is someone he can trust. And trust him we shall! Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, and why the crown has not done something about it, is beyond me. But then, I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. Well... How bide you, good merchant? Quite well, though a purchase would not hurt me any. Oh, uh, yeah? The pawn shop's counter is made of a sturdy teak. The wood is well worn by eager hands and well oiled by the shop's faithful keeper. 
God, I didn't ask about the counter surface. I want to know about these items. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. Looks like we've got quite a few of these here. I see you have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She is made of plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. Wow. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its notes are fine and true. Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well used by one of the island's best painters. There's a lot of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Thank you. Have you an interest in tinder boxes? This one is only slightly battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pad, and even a candle in case you find yourself with naught else to hold the flame. Oh my god, I almost broke out in the Justine voice, but then I stopped myself as soon as he said tinder boxes. Alright, um, check this out. I got a coin. I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. All right. I'm not going to mess around here. We're taking the nightingale. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. Let's take a look at these mints. I mean... An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Let's go ahead and take one. Alexander takes a mint. So now we got two new things in our inventory. The small green mint looks very tasty. The mechanical nightingale is made of tin painted dreary shades of brown to match the coloring of a real nightingale. A small key emerges from its back. So uh, that's all we're going to do here now, but we will be back to this pawn shop many times in the future. But uh, let's go talk to the ferryman now, like the bookshop owner said. Well, hello there. There's a young girl in the yard. The girl is dressed in a long, plain orange robe with a thick headdress. From the appearance of her clothes, and from a skittish, fearful look about her, Alexander gets the strong impression that she is a servant, or even worse, a slave. The serving girl appears to be stealing a quiet moment tending the rose bushes. Huh. The entrance to the house is a time-worn wooden door. Thanks. The house is made of stucco in an architectural style native to the island. It is apparently quite old since climbing vines embrace its exterior. You lazy thing! Get back to work and stay away from those roses! I've told you a million times, those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you! You've still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning! And get your veil back on! No one wants to look at your face! Yes, stepmother. Aww. That's interesting that there's a portrait right there. In the DOS version of the game, there's no portrait. Huh. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, I don't know actually who does the voice for the stepmother, but she's a very charming lady. I think it might be Roberta Williams. I'm probably really wrong on that. I know that uh, as she's the creator of the series of the games and the writer as well. Anyway, um, she did some voices for five. She was the rat, among others. Hey, stranger, come join me. The water is wonderful, and I can show you the way to the next island. What is happening here? 
a young boy is happily swimming in the sea off the docks. The waters in this cove appear calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface, which indicates an undertow. An Come undertow? On, jump in! A little water won't hurt you! Alright, here's what we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna make our first save. Oh, shit! What is this? Oh! This is not what I'm used to! This format! Oh, God! This is so weird! Sorry! <laughs> I, I guess maybe this is uh, Scum VM's thing. I'm not sure. Okay. Critical one. Wait, what am I doing? I don't know why I'm giving it a name. Uh, slot one. No. <laughs> uh, 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 boy in water. Great. So, uh, just for fun, we're going to do it. Considering the poor condition of the shore, it looks like the easiest way to get into the water is just to jump off the pier. The powerful currents grab Alexander. Struggle as he might, he feels himself being pulled out to sea. <laughs> Not a very good swimmer, are you? <laughs> Help me! Sorry, I think not. <laughs> As his head submerges for the third time, Alexander finds himself pondering the wisdom of going out on a limb for a stranger. What a jerk! Tickets out next! Alexander couldn't handle those currents. That boy must be an unbelievably strong swimmer. So, um... <laughs> uh, uh, continuing in the King's Quest tradition, uh, there is usually a little blurb whenever you die, and more than often than not, it's a pun. So, there you go. Oh, wow, that's crazy. It, there's a screenshot of it. All right, well, screw you. What are you waiting for? I said I'd show you how to get to the next island, didn't I? All right, what? What are you gonna do? Good day, I'm Alexander. What are you doing in the sea? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm swimming! I mean, come join me! The water's wonderful. I can show you the way to the next island. Hey, you've already said that. Whoa! That's strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps he just dove under the water. Nah, bro, he straight up disappeared. But, anyway. So, uh, yeah, the fairy is totally out of commission. <laughs> you were not exaggerating, uh, bookkeeper. Yeah, what do you want? Oh, man. Okay, uh, we gotta aim this very carefully. Alexander promises Damn himself it. that he will not go home until he has determined what Cosima's feelings are for him and if she needs his help. This is so hard to do. Alexander Damn it. promises. Excuse me. There we go. My name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands, if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right, if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? Well, all sorts of things. The meaning of life. Being alone in the universe. Physics. Mathematics. And your boat, or whatever. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. It just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the islands feuding and all. Wazir Alhazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me? I don't think she'll ever see water again. Ah. <sighs> But why are the islands feuding? You got me. 
Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired... This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Oh shit. We got it. The ferryman is a disgruntled looking man who is probably a lot younger than he appears. Despite his tired air, he watches Alexander patiently. Huh. That's kind of weird. Several oil lamps are strategically placed around the boat's cabin to eliminate the island's dark nights. Alexander is sitting inside the ferry's cabin. The place displays the neatness of a seaman and the sparseness uh, of a bachelor. Uh, uh, there are a few frills and comforts in the rough wooden environment, but the sunlight shines cheerily on the oaken beams, and the portholes admit a pleasant breeze. It emits the pleasantness of what? What did you say? What's this thing? Let's take a look at it first. There's a rabbit's foot on the table. It seems the ferryman is counting on a little luck. Uh, how's that worked out for him? Don't ask him about it. I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? Ah. As you can see, my luck's been out for some time now, despite that old charm. Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. That item is very important. Tell me more about the ferry. I remember when I used to ferry Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. He's got a I long neck. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the Queen and the Princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima was such a pretty thing, and she was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies, she asked the Queen, but the Queen had no answer. Huh. Interesting. What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Me? I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained to avoid the reef and the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. You can be quite sure that this old ferry is, or was, the only craft on the island. Hmm. Tell me more about Princess Cosima. Ah, such a beautiful child, and so pure of heart. Why, a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Her mother was the same, the king and queen. They served the islands, not the other way around. Always thinking about the people. Ah, <sighs> they are sorely missed. Hmm. I miss them too, and I don't even know them. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonder's a lovely spot. A bit crazy, mind you. Gotta have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. Really? What else can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast is pretty, but unfortunately, you can't get very far onto the island. What else can you tell me about the land? The inhabitants of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain are the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see. If you ever get to see them, that is. What else can you tell me about the land? The Castle of the Crown sure is a beauty. She's the finest palace ever built, I'll warrant. Are you gonna say anything about the Island of the Mists or whatever? What else can you tell me about the land? Some say that the land of the Green Isles is near the edge of the world, and that the deadly currents are a result of a magnetism that sucks life from this world to the next. Of course, that's just silly talk. Of course, of course, this whole thing is silly talk in a world of magic and wizards and whatnot. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonders are lovely. Alright, we, we've reached the end of this conversation, I believe. Well, I think I'll be going now. 
Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. 